Hello from Dr. Peter Carter in British Columbia, Canada. This is a climate change education video. Now the topic is future global warming commitment, what is called climate change commitment. And what I'm going to explain is why this is due to the ocean heat lag. So the main reason for the future commitment from today's emissions is called the ocean heat lag. But it's not the only reason for today's uh, commitment to uh, the much greater global warming than we're experiencing today. So I I'm just going to uh, go over the illustration uh, quickly to begin with. Now, obviously, the first thing it shows is that planet Earth is mainly planet water. It's planet ocean. More than 70% of the surface of planet is ocean. And, of course, the ocean goes down into its vast depths. So when we're talking about climate system dynamics, we're really talking about ocean water dynamics. It's the ocean that determines the climate more than anything else. So here's the ocean, there's the surface of the ocean, and uh, this is the uh, small amount of land relative to the ocean water. And these are greenhouse gas emissions here. There's natural greenhouse gas emissions from trees and other natural sources, of course. But uh, since the industrial age, we've been constantly adding at an increasing rate um, our own greenhouse gas emissions from our own industries. Now, the first part of the video refers to greenhouse gas emissions in general. So although fossil fuels is the main source of carbon dioxide being the uh, most important greenhouse gas, the uh, other big source um, next to energy production is our food production. And that's by our industrial age chemical intensive agriculture and uh, livestock intensive uh, food production. So here are these greenhouse gases being constantly emitted into the atmosphere. And in the atmosphere, they actually uh, the molecules of the greenhouse gases actually radiate heat from the lower atmosphere. So that heat gets radiated. Here's the sky. Here's a bird in the sky. The heat gets radiated from the lower atmosphere. And of course, what happens is that it's nearly all taken up by the uh, oceans well over 95% of the uh, additional heat energy that's been added as greenhouse gases to the lower atmosphere has been taken up to warm the oceans. Now that's not a good thing for the oceans, it's very unhealthy for the oceans to be warmed up, but that's, uh, that's another topic. Uh, here's an illustration of uh, the uh, heat energy from the greenhouse gas emissions being taken up and uh, distributed throughout the oceans. And uh, that is what causes the delay, that's what causes the heat lag. From emissions here to a surface temperature increase being registered here takes 30 to 50 years. And it's, there's an analogy which is used by the scientists in explaining this uh, ocean heat lag effect. And it's the analogy of a pot of water on a radiant heat stove. So we can demonstrate this by tipping our uh, illustration upside down here. So here we have the radiant heat from the increased greenhouse gases in the uh, atmosphere. And then if we turn this uh, ocean upside down, we have the analogy, which is uh, the planet ocean uh, being heated up by the increased radiant heat from the additional greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gas heat um, is equivalent to the heat energy being put into the radiant uh, heat element on the stove. So if you add more greenhouse gases, it's like turning up the heat on the stove. So this takes a long time then to uh, warm up the water and for the temperature, the warmth uh, of the water to be felt at the surface here. So you put your finger on here, there's a heck of an amount of heat being generated here, and you're going to burn your finger. But you can keep your finger in the top here for a heck of a long time, and you're not even going to feel it get, get warm. Now similarly, when the, if, you, uh, if you leave the heat on, and you just leave it on, um, the water's all going to boil, boil over, and you're going to ruin your pot. You also know that if it gets to a certain warmth and you turn the heat right down, um, it's going to stay hot. Right? We know that. Okay, it's like baking a cake, right? So that's analogous to the situation that we have with our greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, as well because of the oceans.
So future global warming commitment from today's greenhouse gas emissions due to the ocean heat lag and it's 30 to 50 years. We're looking at IPCC uh, model uh, illustration graphs. This actually is from the 2001 third IPCC assessment and it shows um, global carbon dioxide emissions in gigatons of carbon per year on the bottom. Uh, this scenario is the highest emission scenario which is called A1FI. You can see that it runs from year 2000 to 2050. Next, atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration. And this is carbon dioxide, but this 30 to 50 year heat lag applies to all the greenhouse gases because we're talking heat. And so there's greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And at the top here is the final result, which is the global average increase in uh, temperature from pre-industrial, which is the usual standard, and in degrees C. So when we uh, look at these, um, uh, normally uh, here's greenhouse gas emissions, here's atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations, and here's global average temperature increase, but it doesn't work like that because there's this big delay. So the emissions, these emissions in year 2000 get uh, pretty instantly, uh, they register as an increase in atmospheric uh, greenhouse gas concentration, carbon dioxide in this case, but that does not register as a temperature increase. It registers as a temperature increase 30 to 50 years later. So this is where the global warming occurs from emissions in year 2000. So a highly significant way of remembering this is that today's greenhouse gas emissions are experiences global warming and climate disruption by the generation of today's children. And uh, note, as we all know, that these emissions are constantly increasing. So the rate at which we're adding these industrial greenhouse gas emissions is constantly increasing. So a way of uh, thinking about this uh, ocean heat lag is that um, the uh, oceans uh, have to be uh, encountered and the heat has to be transferred through the oceans. Uh, this emission, which has increased the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration before it registers as a temperature increase. The oceans cause the lag from emissions to atmospheric concentration, the big lag to global warming. So 30 to 50 years for a greenhouse gas emission to register as a temperature increase at the surface of the planet just above the surface of the planet here, which is where the uh, temperature increase is measured. And this is due to the vast ocean water that has to be warmed up by the increased greenhouse gas heat radiation before the surface warms. And that's because most of the greenhouse gas heat, the additional heat by additional greenhouse gases, is used up warming the oceans. The greenhouse gas heat then has to distribute through the vast ocean water before it warms the air just above the surface. Now this heat, which is now stored in the oceans, from then on, extremely slowly, then continues to warm the surface. And uh, that's what we're going to look at um, in the next illustration. This is the next part of the ocean heat lag commitment. And this is a commitment uh, far into the future, a commitment of a much greater degree of global warming than we're experiencing today. And it lasts for one heck of a long time. The commitment is to a warming which is very much greater than uh, today's warming and causing extraordinary unprecedented disasters on every continent on the planet. Uh, this introduces the scientific terms transient and equilibrium uh, warming. Don't be scared about the terms, um, uh, I'm going to explain them. So this continues uh, the uh, model, the IPCC modeling, uh, taking uh, atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide concentration here. This refers to carbon dioxide co specifically, and uh, the um, increase in uh, the global average temperature increase from pre-industrial in degrees C. This uh, TT is called the transient, or used to be called the realized temperature increase, and this one here, and you'll see that the time frame here is a thousand years. This is uh, the equilibrium temperature increase. Now this is a computer model experiment, 
And what happens here is that the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration is instantly stopped increasing at 2050. So it's instantly stabilized, as the scientists say, at year 2050. Obviously, we can't do that in real life. It would take a long, long time to stabilize. And the uh, world economy and um, uh, the governments are showing no intention whatsoever of doing that. So here from now on, from year 2050, the atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide concentration remains the same, remains constant. And then the computer model follows what happens to the global temperature. Now you see the global temperature uh, doesn't stop increasing. The atmospheric carbon dioxide stops increasing, but not the global temperature. It continues to increase. What happens is that the rate of increase slows. It progressively slows down until many hundreds of years later, as we see here, the uh, global temperature is uh, beginning to plateau out and stabilize. So the first big lesson is that uh, global warming lasts for over a thousand years. So this temperature increase here, called the transient temperature increase, that's the increase at the time of atmospheric carbon dioxide stabilization. So the first job is to stabilize the atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide the atmospheric greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But that's not going to stop the temperature increasing. The temperature is going to continue to increase. It's just going to slow the rate of increase. So the transient temperature is the one that occurs at the time of greenhouse gases being stabilized in the atmosphere. The equilibrium temperature increase is the additional slower warming that goes on for hundreds and hundreds of years after the transient temperature increase. So that's the equilibrium warming. Now it's about double the warming at the time of atmospheric greenhouse gas stabilization. And it's the carbon dioxide which matters here. So it's about double the transient temperature increase. Now this was established in the very first IPCC assessment in 1990. And um, it was repeated by the most recent assessment that we have, which is actually by the National Research Council in 2010 called climate stabilization targets. So the equilibrium warming is about double the transient warming. It results from the um, uh, ocean heat lag. The ocean water, being water, gives up heat very, very, very slowly. The heat stored in the ocean from the atmospheric greenhouse gas warming continues to warm the surface at a progressively diminishing rate, very slowly, over an extremely long period of time. So the global warming that we're bringing about and the climate disruption that that brings about is practically forever. So the commitment is to all future generations. And most, most important to understand that because the emergency is from the point of view of all future generations of humanity and life on the planet. Actually, things have caught up with us because we've delayed for so long doing anything that the actual emergency is now today as well. But that's another issue as well.